Once the various members, loads acting on the connection, and operations necessary to connect the members have been defined, it's then time to carry out the various types of analysis. In this case, the first analysis that we'll do will be the stress-strain analysis, which is, furthermore, the analysis used to check the various components of the connection. Therefore, what I need to specify for the program first of all, is the type of analysis I want to do. I can do this in two ways. On the one hand, with this project items module that I have in general tools, here I may have a drop down menu with various connections. I can create a new one, I can copy one, and then the part that interests us now, I can also select the specific type of analysis that I want to do. On the other hand, the same module, but rather more extended with other parameters, can also be found on the project tab, specifically in information. In addition to those parameters that we already saw in the introduction, here I have the various connections that I have inside this file, with its name, its description, and the type of analysis assigned in each case. What's the relevance of this? This option of having different connections within the same file is not intended for storing in the same file all the connections in the project. Apart from that the file would be very heavy due to the large number of connections it contained, if any problem occurred with the file that caused us to lose it, it would mean losing all the connections. Furthermore, it would be much slower to work with a file like this. Therefore, I wholeheartedly advise you against using it in this way. So what is the purpose? How do I use this Project Connection Manager? Well, for example, to try out different designs for the same connection, i.e. a connection in which I'm using an end plate. For example, I could also try out a connection with cleats, with transversal plates, and so on. Another use of having various connections within the same project is the possibility of duplicating a connection to then be able to assign it a different type of analysis. For example, this connection that I have selected, the connection with 20, which corresponds to the one that I'm visualizing at the top here, I could make a first model to evaluate the stress strain, this first analysis that we're going to do, and then I could also duplicate the connection with this button here to generate of the same connection, 20, with the same definition, another type of analysis, for example, a stiffness analysis. So in this case, it is useful and advisable to have different connections within the same file. But it's not in any way recommended to place all the connections of the project inside the same file. As you can see, we have a first analysis, stress strain, with which we can check the various components of the connection, and with which, in addition, as we'll see further on, we can do the local buckling analysis. On the other hand, here I have the various analysis types, stiffness, capacity design, and joint design resistance. We will, of course, see these analysis types as we go through the course, and we'll discuss them in much more detail. For now, I just want you to know where to find them, and how to specify to the program which type of analysis you want to carry out. And that's it. So, as I mentioned, in this case, and I'm going to delete this connection that I introduced, I'll stick with number 20, the one I had previously, I'm going to do a stress-strain type analysis. Once I've specified this type of analysis, I could calculate it straight away, but what I always advise is to, before calculating, go to this button next to the Calculate option, which is Code Setup, and review the program's default settings. Here we have the various parameters that I can set or edit in the program, some from the point of view of the code used, and some from a numerical point of view, from the point of view of calculation within the program. If you look, in this specific case, these settings are for Eurocode, and of course if I use another code, such as the American code, I'll have the settings that correspond to the American code. However, there are certain common parameters that appear, irrespective of the code used. This is to comment in a, in a very general way. Of course, in the PDF document, you have a more detailed explanation of each of the parameters, including a reference, a link, to the section of the code where they appear. And therefore, in order not to make the video too long, I'll just comment on the most relevant ones and give you an overview of what these parameters are.
If you notice, the parameters are grouped into a series of blocks according to category, i.e. on the one hand I have a series of parameters related to the type of analysis check that I want to do. On the other hand, I have some parameters related to the partial safety factors, others for the concrete block, others to configure the analysis and which results I want to be displayed, others that are numerical, as I mentioned, from the point of view of the program's internal calculation. So starting at the top, stop at strain limit appears. This parameter is one of the most important and I recommend always having it activated. What does this mean? As you know, and as I've said already, this is a finite element program. It's nonlinear, and it works with iterations. Of the load that I apply in the connection, of these loads that I've introduced, the program will gradually introduce load steps until it has applied the full load that I had introduced, until it reaches 100%. So I have two ways of working with the program. On the one hand, I can tell it to reach 100% and then show me the results that it's obtained. Or, on the other hand, I can tell it that, as it applies the, the load steps, when a component, whether it be a plate, a bolt, or a weld, doesn't check, it doesn't satisfy the check, the program should take the calculation and generate the results for that load percentage. This, of course, when we show the calculation results, I'll come back and explain it using a calculation example. Consequently, my advice is to always have this option activated. It will make the job easier and it will reduce the calculation time. Then we have detailing. In addition to the check of the components and the resistance check, the program also allows us, in the case of the bolts, to check these construction tolerances of distance between bolts and of distance between bolts and plate edge. In order to take these distances into account, we need to activate the detailing box. The next option, the concrete breakout resistance, allows us to take into account, for connections of anchor plates to concrete elements, the breakout check of this concrete cone. Of course, when we see in detail the checks corresponding to the anchor plates, I'll return to and expand this concept of concrete breakout. Pretension force factor and friction coefficient in slip resistance. In the event that we're using preloaded connections with preloaded bolts, we'll need to provide a preload force and a friction coefficient to the various plates. The partial safety factors, in this case, are those of Eurocode. If I were using the Spanish code, for example, the factor gamma m1 and gamma m0, they aren't 1, they're 1.05, so I'd have to change them and insert the corresponding value. In terms of the concrete block, here we have another series of parameters, which, of course, we'll be seeing in more detail further on, and, as I mentioned, are explained in greater depth in the PDF document that accompanies the video. In terms of the check settings, the first parameter that appears is the limit plastic strain. As I was saying, the way of checking with this program, at least in the part concerned with plates, when using a finite element model, if I want to take into account this plastic range of the steel, the check criteria that needs to be used is that the plastic strain doesn't exceed 5%. So here we have the 5% assigned by default. Of course, I can modify it. I can put 10%, for example. Or if I didn't want to take into account this plastic range of material, if I wanted to calculate connections only in the elastic range, I could simply enter a value of zero. Specifically, and this happens in many programs, with computers, numerically, they often dislike the value zero, and so it's always necessary to trick the program in some way, using a very similar value, for example, 0 0.001 instead. This really is a zero, but internally, the program can interpret this value. In this case, it's not allowing me to apply it. It's telling me that there's an error, because the next parameter that I have is the warning plastic strain, i.e. the program, when it shows me the results of the check, it'll show me a series of warnings or alerts. So clearly, the warning plastic strain that I have assigned, this 3%, is greater than this value that I wanted to enter here for the plastic strain limit, so it's not letting me apply it. It's a question of modifying another parameter. Then, although we'll see it later on, there are also alerts for values close to the limit, this warning check limit, 
and for optimal utilization percentages, this optimal check level. These parameters that come configured by default, I can also modify them. On the other hand, these distances between bolts that the program allows me to check when I activate the detailing option, with this parameter I can also modify the value of this minimum distance in relation to the diameter of the bolt. For example, in this case, the minimum distance would be 2.2 times the diameter of the bolt. Equally, I can do the same for the distance between the bolt and the plate edge. Then, again, other specific parameters for this concrete block that we'll also see further on. Braced system. This parameter will have a special relevance when we're doing a stiffness analysis of the connection. The bearing check with alpha B. Currently, with the code, given that the check process followed is simplified with a series of equations, the bearing of the plates is checked via an equation with a series of parameters. However, when we have a finite element program like this one, in which I directly obtain stress and strain in the plates, just with this strain, I can check the bearing. So it may be neither necessary nor relevant to also take into consideration the bearing with the simplified equation of the code. Nonetheless, this option remains to restore this check for those cases in which the justification report also has to include this type of check. Again, the apply beta p influence. And we'll see what purpose it serves in the case of shear resistance in the bolts. And finally, we'll have those parameters corresponding to the model and mesh that's going to be applied. The first ones that appear are those related to the default length of the standard member. As you've seen, this is what happens. Since version 9, the length of the members is assigned automatically in relation to the last operation that we've defined. That is, for this beam, the length that applies is assigned automatically on the basis of the stub operation that we've done. What length specifically is applied? In this case, it's once the height of the member. Here I could put, if the length was greater, 1.5 times the height of the member. Why is this length relevant? Above all, from the point of view of stress distribution. If I make very short elements, what will happen is that I'll get a truncation of these stresses, i.e. perhaps a distance of once the height, more or less, might produce a concentration of stresses for some particular reason, although it's rather strange, and if I cut the beam at an earlier point, I wouldn't be seeing this concentration of stresses, I'd be truncating them. Therefore, the program obliges us to have a default length in relation to the height of this component. The minimum value that it will allow us to have to avoid this type of truncation would be 0.5. The same behavior, or the same concept, can apply to elements of any geometry and, independently, to elements with hollow cross-sections. That is to say that these elements, which of themselves tend to be complex to work with, that tend to be unusual for the curves that they have for these curved elements in the cross-section, and therefore the program allows us that the default length for these elements is considered independently. On the other hand, talking about these hollow elements, in the case of circular elements, the program is one of finite elements of the plate type, that is, straight or flat plates. Therefore, it doesn't work with curved elements. What happens when I have a curved profile, or I have a hollow profile? Then the program discretizes it, polygonizes it into straight elements. With this parameter, I can tell the program how many divisions I want it to make in this hollow circular element. 74 is more than sufficient or even excessive. Probably this value with 32 would be more than enough. Clearly, in hollow rectangular elements, I'll have straight elements that won't need to be polygonized. But the curves, these rounded corners of the hollow rectangular element, they are curved elements and they, in turn, will need to be polygonized. In this case, for these arcs, I'll specify how many divisions I want. Again, 3, the default number, is more than enough. Then, of these parameters that we have here, we have the following. Imagine that within the connection I had a bracing with a profile of very small dimensions. In this case, the following particularity arises. 
To generate a correct mesh, I would need to assign a very small maximum and minimum size to that element, i.e. I would need to modify these last two parameters that set the range of values, between which the program is going to make the mesh of finite elements. What happens if I make these parameters very, very small is that when the program generates the mesh, in these elements, these, this column and this beam, which are much bigger members, the mesh will be excessive and it will take a long time to calculate the model. To avoid this, the program allows us to assign a minimum division of elements on the edge. I insist when we see the check section, when we see the visualization of the finite element mesh, that I'll come back to discussing this type of behavior. On the other hand, as it's a non-linear analysis software, during the calculation, a series of iterations will be done. If these iterations were done until they found convergence, the problem that would have for connections in which they don't find convergence is that the program never stops calculating. It would constantly be making iterations. Therefore, we have to specify a maximum number of iterations for the analysis. What does this mean? It means that if, after 25 iterations, the program doesn't manage to find convergence, either it'll stop the calculation or it will reduce the load step that's being applied and will then restart the iteration process. In this way, we don't have to wait for half an hour or an hour trying to check those connections that don't have convergence and are impossible to calculate. Linked to this setting, just as I can specify a maximum number of analysis iterations, I can also specify a maximum number of divergent iterations in such a way as to limit the calculation time the program spends on connections that are badly modeled and have problems related to mechanisms, singularities, etc. Finally, these two settings that I mentioned earlier, the maximum and minimum size of the finite element between which the program will generate that finite element mesh. So, in summary, as I've said, it's important to always check these regulatory settings, which aren't debatable, which are the parameters that the code establishes, those with which the program will carry out the various checks. And a very important piece of advice, always activate this first option, stop at strain limit, which will generate a more precise analysis, and further on, you'll understand more of the advantages of applying this option. And lastly, in terms of the numerical parameters, I emphasize that the default settings that come with the program are more than adequate and are very well adjusted. So don't go crazy changing these parameters and playing around with them. Simply be aware that in those cases in which you don't manage to get the connection to check, or for those that have problems with the check, or when the results that you're getting don't seem good enough, then maybe playing with these parameters you can refine the analysis somewhat. But for the majority of standard connections, standard profiles, the default parameters are more than adequate.